Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. I uh, hope everybody had a good day. Crazy, uh, crazy action today. Um, very, very aggressive. Super aggressive. Um, I, I think I, I think what the market right now is in a, in a very, very delicate place. Again, if you just look at the scoreboard today, you, you're really not going to put um, a lot of pieces to the puzzle. I, I try every morning. What I do is I, I try to get as aggressive as I possibly can uh, to capture our window. I think we spoke about this uh, numerous times on the video that that window from 930 in the morning to about one o'clock. I wish I would have broken my rule uh, after two o'clock today because we just saw a 17 point move on Tesla. That's a whole different story. Um, but I was OK. I was OK with the final uh, outcome. Um, but I, I think one of the biggest one of the biggest things when when you're trading and you, you get that aggression out of the way, um, I use the afternoon to start putting together my early game plan for the next day, and I start looking uh, at macro, you know, macro clues. Okay, like I start looking at stocks like Netflix, what they did a couple of days ago. There's a reason why I'm talking about that now. Uh, I started looking at some names that had really, really big moves. Um, you know, never rallied with the rest of the market, so I started looking at them now. But the most important part, um, I use the afternoon to really get a really good grasp of what might happen next. And if you guys remember, a um, couple of, you know, a couple of, what was it, last week? Oh my God, it's such a long time ago. Uh, last week, we started talking about a potential kind of blow-off top, right? Blow-off top in this area. And a lot of people, you know, they didn't put a lot of stock into it because there wasn't a lot of clues. And the next day, obviously, you know, the market got absolutely shelled and the following day got destroyed. And we're starting to get into a similar type of scenario um, going into tomorrow's session. Again, you know, it might be a little premature, but it's starting to feel that way, starting to look at that. And, and again, we, we need to start talking about clues, right? What's making the market tired? Well, tired buyers will get tired. Eventually, when stocks attempt at a breakout, they're not going to break out because buyers are exhausted. They're, they're, they've been chasing these stocks up in this type of market. Um, even the most aggressive uh, FOMO buyers will get tired. It's just, it's just the reality. So I started looking at clues um, midday, okay? And then I started looking at clues uh, after the close. And I kept on seeing the same thing over and over again. So let's talk about the technical aspects first and we'll cover uh, the pivots in a second here. So if you guys remember, okay, uh, right around here, this is the, the, the 12th, right? The 12th of, uh, of April, right? The 12th of April. And we got stuck right on this linear regression line. And then the next day, right? The next day, we failed to take out the high and we really got destroyed, followed by the next day, two days, really aggressive moves down. And now we're kind of looking at the same thing, right? So you have these big, big bars to the upper area of supply. Same thing, big, big bars, upper area of supply. And if you notice here, you have two days in a row of the action pretty much getting rejected within the same area. The high from yesterday was uh, 231.76 on the Qs. Today's high was 232.13. Again, we don't want to split hairs. When you're talking about ETFs and you're talking about major macro thesis, you're not talking about like a normal stock, like a $3 stock. Well, $3.10 is a breakout. Well, it stopped at 309. It's, it's, it's more of a general area. So if you look at the general area here and you look at the general area here, you're starting to see a lot of similarities, right? Big melt up, right? Five day melt up. Rejection, turn around, big five day meltdown, right? Melt, melt up, rejection went down. Now, the key to again, any single move from price action confirmation, we need confirmation for the next day, okay? So, if you look at the five day moving average, which was from last week, the next day confirmed, we got destroyed. Now, we're right on the five, we're a tad away from the five day moving average. Again, I don't want to split hairs, so I'm going to give the bears the benefit of the doubt. 
So if we could confirm the five-day moving average for tomorrow, I think we'll have a, not, not necessarily a similar move with the destruction candle, but I'll show you guys some examples today of why I think there's a really high probability that we will expect a pretty aggressive, not I don't want to say use the word aggressive, let's just use the word backtest and let the market surprise us what happens later. Now again, remember, this is just the thesis right now, okay? Until uh, the macro area confirms tomorrow, this is just a trade setup, okay? We could gap up tomorrow, gap and go, and reclaim 232 on the Qs and go to all-time highs. Again, it's not about being wrong, it's about being prepared. So going into tomorrow's session, I would like to see the bears, based on what I see, and again, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, I'd like to see them confirm this five-day moving average. Again, the five-day is super aggressive, just look what happened on the shorts uh, yesterday, confirmation today with Netflix, uh, and today what we saw on the downside of Tesla before their huge, huge reversal. So this is the big area, right? This is the big area for tomorrow. Uh, I definitely will be looking at a reversal for any type of weakness. I want to see the strong names, uh, what we saw today, um, not participate. And that's the key because it's not like the market was down, you know, five, 700 points and these things were, you know, you know, getting shelled. They just weren't rallying with the rest of the market. Again, uh, a lot of traders will turn around and say, well, Dan, you're being stupid. You're being silly. These stocks are just resting. They had a big run. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. But just in case they do confirm today's price action tomorrow, we want to be at least prepared okay, for any potential rug pull. So I started looking at the leaders, okay, and this is kind of your, your best way to gauge strength and weakness. So I started looking at the ones that had the biggest runs over the last two weeks, right? You started seeing ZM, right, ZM, and again, it took out the top of the channel here and it rolled over. Uh, you look, for example, like Tulo. And again, there was a really good pivot on Tulo today. And again, I don't want to use Tulo as the prime example. Again, I'm just trying to make a point of just showing you what happens after the, the buyers got tired after the breakout, right? So it actually got to the breakout level today. It went up 30 cents, right? And sold off $3. Amazon had this really, really, really big run. And just right when it was about to confirm, it rolled over. And again, do you see where it stopped, right? Everybody see where it stops? right at the five-day moving average. Again, there's a theme here, okay? There's an absolute theme here. Um, stocks like Facebook, right? Major, major, major run, right? Same thing, major run, inverted hammer. Again, inverted hammer is the most basic, you know, basic tool to show you uh, that a stock is weak or at least a stock is tired, gassed out short term. Again, we will be looking for confirmation tomorrow to the downside. And the biggest clue was two days ago. You guys remember Netflix, right? Uh, that short from uh, two days ago when it lost the five-day moving average. Netflix was the first one, okay, before Amazon, before Zoom, before any of these stocks to take out its 52-week high and then slowly but surely in the last couple of days got rejected, just like we're looking at the queues right now, got rejected at the top of the range here, went down to the five-day, confirmed the five-day and got this really, really destroyed today. And again, tomorrow, if this thing confirms tomorrow, uh, it should go lower as well. So again, that is my initial uh, that is my initial thesis uh, going into tomorrow. Again, it doesn't make a difference if I'm wrong or not, right? It, it, who cares? Nobody cares. Okay, at least I don't care. Okay, if the market gaps and go and we get value to the upside, again, there are still areas of value that I like. For example, Shop had a really beautiful breakout today. Uh, I traded Shop today. Great move. If it can sit, if it you know reclaims today's levels, and you know there's this there's room. There's room more to the 820s. So there's definitely areas that I like. Right. You know, even Tesla, for example. Okay, if it starts reclaiming, reclaiming today's action, confirms this whole area. I like that as well. But again, I think in my opinion, at least. To the initial area, the value tomorrow will be to the sell side if obviously confirmed. If not, again, we switch bias uh, very, very quickly and move on, uh, move on uh, to the other side of the equation. So uh, after hours, the big, um, the big number was uh, was Nvidia, right? Nvidia had uh, just an absolute monster, you know, monster run for uh, 150 points uh, from the March lows, and again, da da da, da closed right on the five day. Again, coincidence? You make up your own mind. Um, but the key is, right, the key is how is the stock going to react after earnings? I personally think the stock probably will go lower tomorrow. It's down, you know, it's down what? Four or five points after the close. That's not really a victory for the bears. I'm not talking about going down four or five points. I'm talking about if it starts confirming the bottom channel here and you can see it, right? 
If it starts confirming this bottom channel here, it has a lot of room down. So the idea that the stock is down after earnings, it's not a big deal macro-wise, okay? Because NVIDIA had a great quarter. They beat by 11 cents. Uh, I think they guided revenue higher. But the point is, again, there's always the question, the stock already had this 150-point run. Does it really matter how the market um, reacts to its earnings? So I think it's just, just for a trade tomorrow, but I definitely will be looking for the bottom of the range here. There, there's obviously an upside channel I like, right? above here, and there's definitely a downside channel that I like down here. So we'll see which one, um, you know, we'll see which one uh, confirms first. Um, so that's kind of my, my view for tomorrow's session. Uh, crazy, crazy day. I mean, crazy day. Um, a lot of big moves, right? A lot of big moves. Um, ironically, my day started really bad, like really, really bad. I, I, I keep on forgetting to stop trading Netflix prior to 10 o'clock. And the reason I say that, Netflix in the last two months or so has been trading really, really wide and really, really thin. And I shorted yesterday, I had a really good short on this thing yesterday off the five day break. And I, I shorted it twice today. Once um, I got spread out, man, they, they spread my ass out. It was, it was painful to watch. So I shorted, I shorted the initial move, right? I shorted the initial move and it went down like a dollar in seconds, but it was so wide, didn't even have a chance to breathe. And then what happens when a stock is so wide, okay, they, they just don't sit there, let you get out. They will spread you out 50 cents at a time, yada, yada, yada. Next thing I know, I almost lost $3 in this thing like this. So I started the day, I started the day really crappy, right? I think that's the best way of saying it. The, the only good thing about starting the day off crappy, you really have the whole day. Now I had two choices. Trade emotionally, try to trade everything in sight or wait for my setups. The, the, the novice trader, the inexperienced trader is always going to put themselves in a position they're trying to come back emotionally. I look at it as a value tier system one by one by one. Again, one day at a time, one trade at a time. And what really saved me today was there was super value, right? Ridiculous value all across the board. And yes, it did take me three or four trades to get, to get it back. But boy, oh boy, when everything started snapping, things had really, really aggressive channels. And this day turned out to be uh, a pretty aggressive day. Uh, so let's talk about this, right? Uh, first and foremost, congratulations to all you guys who caught uh, NVIDIA, uh, excuse me, not NVIDIA, um, um, shop overnight. Uh, that 766 uh, confirmation channel yesterday, uh, stock gapped up today. I said, hey, look, you know, this thing has a shot over 800 could go very, very aggressively. So congratulations to all you guys who had that overnight. But this was basically the trade that kind of started off my comeback. Uh, Boeing, you know, we talked about this for the last couple of days. Uh, the 140s, uh, the 140, the 142.50s, the 145 call buyers all came in, all came in the, pre in the previous couple of days. So we knew there was money on the table and we just wanted to see it confirmed. This morning, I think it was RBC that... Um, that upgraded Boeing today with $164 price target. And we knew how important this 137 air area was. Uh, 137 was the high from two days ago. It got rejected twice pre-market at 137 as well. And like I said, including must reclaim and build. And Boeing does what Boeing does, right? Boeing does what Boeing does. So here was the 137. This whole area here was 137, including the 137 high. And Boeing just absolutely exploded just just absolutely exploded and this has kind of started back my kind of road to recovery and again it's so easy to shut down when you especially when you get clipped very very hard um in the morning okay a lot of new traders take it very very personally for me look it doesn't make a difference if it comes on my first trade of the day the second trade of the day my ninth trade of the day or my 19th trade of the week a trade is a trade is a trade things are going to happen you're going to run into a buzzsaw and I caught a very, very aggressive bus saw today on Netflix. But again, let's start off. Let's start off with Boeing. Uh, huge move, 37. Uh, that first candle went all the way to 42 and a half. Went as high uh, as 44. Just an absolute explosion uh, on Boeing. Uh, NOW, I still like. Uh, There's still those $400 call buyers. 
are coming in this whole week. Maybe maybe he wakes up tomorrow. Uh, shop 75, uh, 795 needs to build. So again, I'm trying to get it back one by one by one. Uh, so I bought shop. Uh, I bought it on the opening range uh, at 799, and I only took about four, four or five points out of it. it. wasn't wasn't a big trade, but here at this point, I'm just trying to you know chip away, chip away, chip away. And shop was good. I mean, shop was really, really good. Um, so here was shop right here. Here was the here was the whole channel right here. Here was the 795. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, right here. Here was a 795, and it went, the first move uh, went to 805 perfectly, and then, you know, it went a little higher. But again, I'm just trying to chip away. No home runs, just trying to get on base, trying to uh, manufacture back. And again, that was the most important part. And again, this is one of those scenarios that, again, I, this is when I started getting the clues that stocks are, might be getting tired off their highs. So here was ZM. Uh, 176, 75, 177 needs to build. And again, this is where the stock really should have exploded and it really didn't. So 176, 75, 177 only went up a buck, okay? Only went up a buck and reversed really, really hard. And that's when I started looking at Amazon. That's when I started looking at Facebook. That's when I started noticing uh, Apple as well. And again, you know, those are the, that's the kind of trend uh, that's going into tomorrow and might be spilling over uh, for more. And this is where Tesla really gone crazy. So. I put in a pivot here on Tesla, 827 to the upside, 803 to the downside. Guess what? They both confirmed, right? And this is what really saved my day as well. Uh, 803 downside. Again, we, we were noticing Tesla just wasn't rallying for the last two, three days, just putting in lower highs. And, you know, here was, you know, here was the daily chart. I kept on, and again, this is the most important part, folks. I keep on talking about that five day, that five day, the shortest term sentiment. So you, you can see here, 803 was the low here. It took out 803. I said it was going to get down to 796 uh, on that first move, and the reason why, if you look at if you look at the support, I don't know if it comes off on camera, but this faded line here, you see this faded line here? This faded line here is uh, 796. That's the low. So my lowest cover was that 497 level. I was tickled pin. I was very very happy about it. Um, very, very happy about it. Confirmed that 803 went down to 796. So then I said, you know, we're going to wait patiently, wait for that 796 confirmation. Because if it happens, I said, hey, there's a shot. This damn thing could go all the way down to 787. But that's the whole point. Okay. We didn't anticipate the move after it, it, it traded into the next support. Okay. We waited. Okay. That's the whole point. We're not trying to forecast what happens next. We're letting the market. And we started watching Tesla got stronger and stronger and stronger. And there was an area here, uh, if you go on my uh, Twitter account, right? If you go on my Twitter account, um, my regular one, on, on, on the Twitter account, I said at this, at this point of, uh, at this point of the day, I go, I'm just, uh, I'm just really, really tired. Um, but if you look, I go, look, for all you guys who are trading, right? For all you guys who are trading, keep an eye on, uh, I said, keep an eye on Tesla. If it starts building, right, if it starts building above 814, it could really get going. If you go through my account, they, again, I can't find this so much crap here. Uh, yeah, so here is, here is, here it is right here. So I put this on the feed and I go, look, I go, I'm not in the trade. I'm just too tired. I'm, I'm already done for the day. But I go, look, this is a big area here, 814. Uh, if it, if the bulls want to stretch, it really needs to, you know, it really needs to, to reclaim there. I go, a weekly buyer just came in. Uh, a weekly buyer just came in on the 820s. Keep an eye on that level. And Tesla absolutely explodes. Okay, absolutely explodes. Let me show you guys. Uh, let me show you guys where that um, 814 level was, right? So here was the 814 level. It was right here. Hold on. Here, let me show you. The 814 level. You see this supply zone right here? 81331 was the highest area in the supply and got rejected. So 814, I said this thing is going to go to 821, get rejected. But if it gets above 821, there's a shot it gets to 826. 826 is obviously the previous day's high. And then there's a shot it goes into the 830s. And Tesla just absolutely exploded. Matter of fact, we saw uh, buyers coming in, uh, buyers coming in for the June 1000 calls over and over and over again. So uh, really big moves, there. really, really big moves there. Uh, then I caught Roku 114 downside. That's been a big number there. Uh, I caught it for only a scalp, like 50 cents or so. But again, it is what it is. Again, I was just trying to get back into it one by one by one. And then the most amazing part is the stock that murdered me in the morning, right? Murdered me in the morning. I took it as a second entry. And I don't want to say I murdered it back, 
but at least I did something to the damn thing. So Netflix caught me the first time around and I caught it the second, right? I caught it the second from here uh, all the way down here. So I wound up losing about that first trade, about 265, 270. And I wound up getting back about $1.80 of it. So it worked out well. But again, it was just one of those days, man. It's, it's like if, if I wasn't overly aggressive on a stock that I know has big wide spreads, it would have been a really, really crazy, you know, really, really good day. But again, no complaints. The, the most important thing, and you know, all of us were going through this in the webinar, the most important thing was it was under control, right? It was under control. It was early part of the day. There was no emotional revenge trading. It was value after value after value. And thank God, right? Thank God there's a little stock called the best stock ever who definitely saved the day for me. So guys, tomorrow's Friday again. Uh, it's been a tremendous aggressive channel on Fridays. Um, you know, maybe we could have another one tomorrow. So I am a little sell bias. I want to wait for uh, confirmation on everything. But again, there it, we are setting up for a pretty good aggressive channel potential tomorrow. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Stay blessed, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.